Hello and welcome to Gas Kings. We have been lucky enough to get our hands on the Tesla Model S. This one's the 85 edition. Um, what we're going to do is do our own kind of little review on it, um, what the interior is like, the exterior, what it's like to drive, and more importantly, actually test for ourselves the autopilot as well. So come with us on our journey, let's go and see exactly what this car's all about. the front of the Tesla Model S um, is all quite futuristic as you'd expect in an um, electronic car you've got the iPad style screen at the front which you can just customize for anything you want on there um, you can actually open all the doors have the lights on um, open the boot open the front trunk which actually has um, room for a, for a couple of bags nothing nothing major um, the rear as well you can actually put rear seats in there so you can actually make this five-seater car into a seven-seater but it's quite for the younger younger kiddies in there I don't think you'd be, uh, be able to get an adult in the back without kind of chopping their head off when you press the boot button um, you've got Spotify on there as well you've got your normal sat nav so everything and as you kind of push it you can you can obviously control the sunroof um, your driving conditions whether you want it to creep forward like a normal automatic car or you don't um, so literally everything is in here see on the front um, as you expect with any normal car obviously it does your speed it's got the, um, the the temperature on there and also you can either change it to say how long you've got in the car less so this says we've got 242 miles or you can also put it to a, to a percentage button all nice feel um, it's kind of like Alcantara on the front, kind of carbon fibre style, I don't know, like stickers or like an overlay, like a plastic overlay, which is all kind of extras if you want it. Nice cup holders which you can put back here. Um, and then the two buttons, the only two buttons they've kind of gone with is the two most common buttons you probably use. One's obviously put the hazards on, and the other is for the glove compartment. Welcome to the rear of the uh, Tesla Model S. As you can see, there's a lot of actual room um, for adults, not for kids or someone with no legs, like you normally get in either kind of like a, a Bentley or a Porsche um, 997, where they actually have back seats, same as the GTR, but you can never actually sit in them. This one, I can literally stretch right out. I do have actual leg room, because I actually have legs as I'm an adult. Um, so yeah, it's, it's all right, it's a nice headroom as well. I think if you're a little bit taller than me, I'm about five foot 10, you might struggle, especially with the pillars, but you know, who really sits in the car like that? As you can see, there's a uh, plenty of luggage room, especially in the front trunk, it fits an adult in here. And as you come to the rear, that's where you put your normal shop in. It could probably fit a good two or three dead bodies in there as well. So if you are a mass murderer, and you want to tie someone up and you have, you know, put them in the back, I think you'd be able to fit maybe two or three bodies if I squeeze up. Yeah, you could probably get another body in here. So that's great. All right, so what's it like to drive? It's actually quite stable. It's quite eerily weird how it's so quiet. There's actually no engine noise at all. Unlike the i8 where you obviously have the synthesized sounds of engines in the um, in the cockpit to give you that feel that you've actually got like a V10 or a V12 engine behind you. Um, this one is actually really quiet. I don't know whether that's one of their um, market employees or, or techniques that they just wanted it to be really quiet electric car to boost its ele electric capabilities but the power is just immense obviously you put your foot down this one does 0 to 60 in about 4.2 4.3 seconds I think it's 4.2 and you can get the upgraded model model which does um 2.8 seconds so if i just pull out of here and i'll actually show you roughly if i put my foot down now uh, you really do feel the acceleration it's just so weird how there's no noise with it so autopilot mode what it's doing is it's actually reading the lines um, of, of the of the motorway so it actually only really works on the motorway so I've been told um, not yet to try it on obviously just a, a normal road but on the motorway it reads both lines and keeps the car obviously in between the lines and also from the car in front as well if you flick the switch up apparently will change lanes for you so what we're gonna do is give that a go um, there's a massive truck uh, in front of us, so I'm a little bit a bit dubious about doing it here, but let's give it a go So I'm gonna flick this twice. I hopefully we'll go straight into autopilot mode It's meant to make a weird funny sound so obviously let me know that it's done that and then I should be able to let my hands go and and hope to God that you know It actually works all right for us. So let's give it a go. You ready? So I flick this twice uh, 
That is so weird. Right, it's now doing 62. It's apparently keeping the distance between me and the uh, that massive truck in front. It does give warning saying keep your hands on the wheel, but I'm just doing this for obviously to show you guys that it's actually doing it. It's so weird. Now it's about brought it down to 57 miles an hour, so I'm getting closer and closer to the to the truck in front. Oh my god, no hands! This is so weird. It's literally like a passenger. No hands, no legs, but in the air. This is so weird. Right, so I try to change lanes, apparently it does it. Oh, potholes. Oh my God, it's like so eerie. Obviously you're so used to taking control of the car and obviously driving everywhere. And I've been driving for 10 years plus. You know, you've never been a passenger as such. Well, even when you're sitting in the driver's seat, I'm actually a passenger right now in, in obviously the Tesla and it's such a weird feeling. It's so weird, right? I'm gonna try to apparently press up and it will change lanes. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Right, I'm gonna try again. Let's push the, uh, hold the steering wheel up. And hopefully. Ah, oh, so weird, change lane for me. Let's cancel that signal. Now that is weird. I don't know where you saw it just then. Obviously, that you gotta keep your hands on the wheel and press the indicator up to obviously which lane you want to go in. But then the steering wheel and the car just feels like it's been possessed and just turns for you, obviously keeping in, in mind obviously what's round with the proximities. Now it's speeding up to obviously the normal the road road limit, which is the 70, and I've not even touched a thing. This is so weird. Right, I'll try again. So I'll keep my hands on the wheel, pressing, I want to go into the other lane. Oh my god, it's doing it! Ah! Bollards! Bollards! Fuck! That is so weird. You're just watching the bollards come closer and closer and you're hoping that the car is actually doing its thing. And it stopped luckily. My bum's twitching. Uh, but it's such a weird experience to actually... I'm now in the fast lane, not in control of the car. Well, kind of, but not in control. The actual car is doing everything for me. And I'm just a passenger in this. This is so weird. Ooh, can we come off the slip road? And... Power! Oh! oh my god, that's quick. Please follow the road for. Gets to Sandy months. pretty quick. Hey, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Face was peeling back. Okay, so what we're actually going to do now is put it back into autopilot again. Now we're on the motorway, on the M4. Uh, there's not too much cars around, and I actually do have a co-pilot as well to kind of be my eyes and ears while I'm just about to do what I'm going to do. We have, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it in that camera, a, a rear-facing camera, obviously, a front-facing from in the rear. Um, I'm going to put it in autopilot and basically tell you what the driving experience is like through that camera. So I'm going to try that, and uh, hopefully we don't die. Right, so let's bang it in autopilot mode. Flick this twice, and it'll go ping. Right, so that is autopilot mode engaged. So I should be able to now take my hands off the wheel. And, oh, this is so dodgy. I can't even do it. I can't even turn around and like not look in front when you're doing like 65 miles an hour. I've fit 60. Oh my god, the cars are slowing down. Oh, can I do it? Can I do it? I'm not sure. So, driving along at 60 miles an hour on the motorway, no hands, and the car is in complete control. I'm obviously speaking to the rear, I can't stop looking forward, it's just so natural. I can see the cars from behind literally coming really close, and people are overtaking on my right hand side, and I can do absolutely fuck all about it. Um, I'm not going to do this for long because my bum is twitching, but it proves a point that this actually does work. And, um, you know, doing long motorways and stuff like that is really good. Right, I've got to, right, I've <laughs> got to take control of the car again. What I was saying is, obviously on the motorways, it'd be really good for autopilot. Um, you know, if you're doing long journeys, long commutes, stuff like that, stick it in autopilot, let the car do the work, while you kind of just relax, watch the road, um, watch out for the Muppets around you, because that's what really what's going to cause the crash, not the car. Um, it does seem really stable. It seems like they've really got the system down to a T about you know, keeping in the lines, um, watching out for everything around you. So if you wanted to pull out into the car, into the right-hand lane, doing it automatically, it won't actually let you because obviously the proximity sensors 
um, sense there is a car coming up by the side of you and it won't let you do that maneuver. Okay, so overall rating or overall kind of feel for the car. We've been in the car since two o'clock, it's now four o'clock, we're still on the motorway. Uh, so we've been in the car for two hours. So it's giving me a really good feel uh, for what the Tesla is all about. Would I buy one? Put myself in the kind of business person's shoes uh, or a family guy. Obviously, I'm a family, I've got you know wife, child. Um, we've had the Mercedes C220, we've had a Range Rover Sport before. Would I choose this over one of the cars I've already had? Yes, I would. You still get that fun. I'm sure my uh, four-year-old would absolutely love it in the back with me accelerating and, and braking all day long, so the same as I do. Um, and you know, apart from, I think the looks could be a little bit more aggressive, but um, would I choose this over an i8? Probably would. Obviously, an i8 is a lot more money than, um, than the Tesla. For an i8, I think you're looking around about £114,000 um, straight out of the factory. Whereas this, you know, you can grab one for you know, it's just shy of £60,000. Or if you want to obviously go for the higher end model, like I said before, you're looking at around £104,000 and you get the 0 to 60 of um, 2.8 seconds as well to go with it. Um, this is obviously 4.3 seconds, 0 to 60. It's adequate enough to you know keep a smile on your face. Um, as well as actually getting your family from A to B. A lot of luggage storage, obviously you've got the back, you've got the front trunk. Um, if you want, if she wants to take her friends out, you can put two seats in the back as well, which is optional extra. I think you probably have to pay a lot more money to have the two in the, in the back seat. Um, would I like it as a business person going from A to B to get to like a business meeting, for example? Yeah, I think you'd look the part. I think you'd look the part if you rocked up to a business meeting in your tes Tesla, it, you'll have a smile on your face anyway because you've been having fun on the motorways, obviously with your autopilot, um, all your mod cons, listening to your favourite tracks on Spotify. Um, I just the only one hurdle for me is the you know 60, up to sixty thousand pounds for a base model. Obviously, by the time you put all your optional extras on there, um, you know the wheels that you want, the interior that you want, you're probably looking at an extra another ten to twenty thousand on top of that. And obviously, if you want the higher end um, or the scale, a hundred and you know, four thousand pounds. I'm not too sure. I'm not. I'm not sure if that's because I don't have that money. I don't know if I did have that money um, and the choice. Maybe a bit, a little bit easier to swallow. But overall, absolutely fantastic car. I'm so glad to um, Tesla for you know give me the car for the afternoon. Um, I've had a lot of fun with it, um, and so is my my co-pilot Ian. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the footage. Um, find us on Instagram, which is gas.kings. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And until next time, guys, bye-bye.